I'd love for you to walk us through Alzheimer's disease. For a long time in the research space, if you weren't studying amyloid, you were not studying Alzheimer's. Yet we haven't arrived at a solution using the amyloid hypothesis. We've essentially disproven it, at least in the ways that we originally thought, where it was causal. Amyloid, we've found, is actually antimicrobial. It's part of an inflammatory cascade. It's part of the immune system of the brain to prevent infections from taking over our brain, from causing our death or from causing us to lose our mind. This is actually a protective mechanism that's unique to the brain. And it's not the cause of Alzheimer's. There's something that triggers that amyloid cascade. And when we look at amyloid, we understand from literature that was has been done over the past 10, 15 years, less than 2% of us do not have amyloid. So we mm. all have some amount of amyloid. In fact, one night of sleep deprivation leads to a measurable increase in amyloid and cerebral spinal fluid in people in their 20s, 30s, or 40s. Now, we also see on the flip side, centenarians who have plenty of amyloid to be diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but they don't have cognitive impairment. They have perfectly fine cognitive function. When we think about dementia, it's that umbrella term. And then underneath that, we have Alzheimer's, which is the most common cause form of dementia, often associated with an accumulation of amyloid. It often starts with not being able to find words or names, increased confusion, missed appointments, misplacing things. There are many other forms of dementia that are not in that Alzheimer's vein. 